Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about learning about discipleship part two. And now we'll be moving into the third question for today. What are some misconceptions about discipleship? Okay, this was this was interesting to me. So to be honest, I I, I Google I had to Google this one. Um, and see what, what other people say um, about misconceptions. And when I began to read some, I'm like, yeah, that's true. I never thought about it that way. Um, but a few that that came across to me was um, one, someone can be a Christian without being a disciple. You know, that's that's a big misconception. Like, okay, I could be saved, I could be a Christian, but not necessarily be a disciple that's a big x um it's already been stated um on this platform that being a disciple is the lifestyle of a believer right we are disciples and once we get to that mature stage we look to disciple others however even those that quote unquote um feel mature um as was also said that we all need we all continue we need continuous discipleship because we're ever learning um, we never get to the place where we're like oh we know it all okay we fold our hands we cross our legs and we're good to go we are ever learning and we see the greatest example of that through Jesus yes he was with his disciples for three years but they had as the church grew we saw that discipleship was a part of how the church actually um, um, expanded and and their reach um, went all over the world because um, there was that mentality of this discipleship and just that was part of the fabric of the embryonic church, the birth of the church, understanding that we need each other in this and we can't leave anybody alone. Um, discipleship is optional. X is not optional. <laughs> discipleship is a ministry or program in the church. Nope, That's, that doesn't work either because programs come and programs go. Um, but discipleship is something that needs to be part of the foundation of who we are. Um, and I'll just share one more. Discipleship is about me. No. Misconception. X. Discipleship is not about me. It's not about, oh, it's all about me. It's about us. Um, and it's about us growing. It's about us um as we are growing in god that we have that desire to share what we have learned to share how we have grown to share our testimony and show that being a christian is not just something we do on a sunday morning it's not just something we do when we meet up on um, zoom or in a building um, because of, it's a church service but it's our very way of living it's our lifestyle teach me how to live um, I feel as young people, you know, we, we are always, and I still call myself a young person, yes. Um, we <laughs> are, we want, we want to know, tell me how to live. When I'm going through this, tell me, what, what, how do I make sense of everything? I know I'm a Christian. I know I have the word of God. But what is the practicality of how I live my life as a child of God? Um, so these are some misconceptions, but thank you. First, I just want to say I love the X's. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> um, you said so many great things, and a lot of them I actually thought growing up myself. So I think it's important that we are tackling the, these particular questions in general um, and these misconceptions, because I honestly thought, like, in the beginning, I said, oh, you don't have to, you know, um, that everyone's a disciple. But growing up, I didn't know that. I honestly thought there was only those 12 disciples and that was it <laughs> like there was no more after that you know and so as I grew um older and I became more into the church and understanding the bible more I realized like I was completely wrong so um yes we are all disciples and then another misconception I feel like people think and not just about um discipleship but Christians in general is that they feel as though um we can't make any mistakes and I think it's important to know that even though you're a Christian, you too are fighting a battle with different things. So you are going to, you know, have things that you uh, um, that you that turn into mistakes, or you may end up sinning and whatever it may be. But people feel like you have to be this perfect. 
person in order to be a disciple, in order to teach, in order to, you know, be a vessel um, in general. And it's not true. You know, we're all work in progresses. We're trying to be Christ-like. And so um, just because you make a mistake doesn't mean that you're automatically shunned, you know? And so I feel like that's also a misconception that you have to be 100% perfect all the time in order to be able to be a blessing to anybody else. And so that's one thing I definitely want to make sure that we touched upon. Yeah, I love it. Um, I had to uh, follow Pastor Michelle and just jump on Google real quick. Um, and then some some other things started coming to me. I, I just want to add something too to what Pastor Michelle was saying, that there is no end goal, or you don't graduate from being disciple, right? We continue, even now, myself today, right? I continue to be disciple. Right? So it's levels to it, in, in essence, if I want to put it in you know, we, us young people terminology or phrase it that way. It's levels to it. Right? You continue to progress and continue to, to grow, right? Because you continue to become, right? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't end, right? Um, you're going to continue to evolve as wrong. Um, God did not cut you off at 18 and say, you know, when you're 18, I'm going to cut you loose. That's it. You're done growing. You continue to grow as you go through different stages and you get older in life and go through different seasons. Um, one thing I saw is that discipleship happens naturally. Um, it does not. Um, it has to be something that uh, the church is intentional about. But it also has to be something that we as children of God have to actively participate in. Right. So we have to also want to be disciple. We also have to want to learn how to live like Christ, how to live for Christ. And the third thing is that discipleship is for uh, super Christians, right? Super saved and the sanctified and the filled with the Holy Ghost and the ministers only and, you know, the youth leaders. It, it is for every single child of God. Everyone needs to be discipled and we should never think of ourselves too so knowledgeable because we have maybe some letters behind our name or because we have a title that we think that we know it all now that we no longer need to be disciple. I believe as disciples, we need to be all, we always need to be teachable right? and always at the feet of Jesus and always ready to learn. Amen, amen. And just adding on to what Sister Tremia said, I think an important element of discipleship is vulnerability. Being able to talk about your struggles, yeah, um, pain, the thing that you've been through because the youth would, may or may not go through exactly what you go through and depending on stuff because, you know, we're on um, different generation, generations, you go through different things. But having that vulnerability with them is telling them, it's like, you know what, he, me and him the same. Because when I was younger, I always used to think that um all the older people was perfect because I never heard nobody talking about whatever they was going through, their struggles, their obstacles. But thank God with my mentors, uh, Gio and Jave, they talk about it. Okay, I, I did. I went through this, I went through that. And then not only tell them what they went through, but what did you learn from what you went through? That's another key information because God always gives us a lesson with whatever we go through. And it's up to you if, if you receive that, that lesson. Discipleship is not about becoming perfect. I think I want to, want to throw that out there. It's not about becoming perfect, right? But it's about participating and progressively becoming. I just want to throw that out there. It's not about becoming perfect, but not at all, right? And so I, I think in those situations, I'm glad I'm able to show Ezra on that, but I'm, I'm not perfect, I'm far from, right? But I am committed to the process of becoming more like Christ, right? That, that's what it is, being committed to this process. May never be perfect, but each and every day I'm going to try to become more like Christ when I say what I do, how I live, um, etc. Amen, amen. It's a diet of self journey each and every single day. And we'll be moving in for our last question for today. Why is discipleship important? Um, why is discipleship important? It is so important, number one, because it's the command of God, right? Um, Brother Jave, Pastor Jave already mentioned um, the scripture reference in Matthew um, 28, I believe, um, that it's the Great Commission, right? So it's a command of God. He's not asking us if we feel like it, <laughs> when we feel like it, um, but it's a command that we go and we make disciples. And I think it's also important because it reveals the, the relational um 
What's the word I'm looking for? Being a Christian is not something you can do in silo. You cannot do it by yourself. Um, we're a family. We, we need to come together. We have to cultivate relationships. Um, and I feel at times, um, even looking back at my journey, um, I have those. I had those times when I didn't want. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to talk to my youth leader um, about certain things. When they would call me, I'd be like, "Oh, uh, I just didn't answer the call." Um, but that was something that was going on in my heart that I was not ready to submit. But when I was ready to submit and let this person in and see that they truly loved me, and we built that relationship. It was something like, um, as Ron said, it's like, where would I be without my mentors? Where would I be without these people um, that God used to cultivate and to pour into me and to pray and to be patient? Um, and with that, I in turn saw myself giving myself to those young people that said that let me in because it is a choice that let me in um, to disciple them that on their worst day, Sister Michelle wasn't there to beat them over the head, but she's there to, to encourage them and say, get back up and to be the cheerleader and to be that person that is just sharing the love of Jesus Christ. And that's how the world's going to know us. Discipleship is also an evangelistic tool. It's also going to let people know, like, what's going on with these people? They love each other for real. They're there for each other through thick and thin. They're not judging each other. They're not beating up on each other. Um, however, we see in certain circles in Christendom where there has been that place where, oh, somebody fall, beating up them upside the head and kicking them out. But that's not discipleship. Discipleship is saying, okay, you fell. I'm here to help you to get back up and to heal and to be delivered. Um, and Jesus shows such an amazing um, picture that I think alludes to discipleship. And I did not look at it until today. Um, in Matthew chapter 11, um, verses 28 to 30, when Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what a yoke is? It's this um, wooden thing that holds two animals together, right? That that farmers use in order to 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 plow, right? Um, so the way that they do this now, they put a strong animal, say it's an ox. They have the stronger, more experienced ox that knows about the field, knows what needs to be done, with a a, a younger, less experienced, weaker ox. Um, and they begin to do what they need to do. And I was looking at that today and I'm like, that is amazing because I, I that's also a, a, a great picture of what discipleship is. I've been through this. I've been here. I've done this, but uh, let's come together in the name of Jesus. And I'm willing to teach you. And that's what Jesus does with us. Every day we make a decision to come to Jesus. We're yoking ourselves with him. We're yoking ourselves and saying, Jesus, I need you to teach me because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. It don't matter if you've been saved one week, five years, 25 years. We are ever learning, ever growing, ever developing. Um, so I think it's important that we know that we remain yoked to Jesus because that yoke is easy. That burden is light because we're all yoked to something. But when we surrender our hearts to Jesus. We're no longer yoked to sin. We're no longer um, yoked to these things that are so, um, that come to steal, to kill and to destroy. But we're yoked to something that's about to give us life. So when we're yoked to Christ, we want to connect to other people and let them know like, hey, you got to come, you got to yoke yourself to him because he's the only way. He's the only one that's going to give you that peace that you need. Um, but I, I truly believe that in this day and age, and I love this conversation because this is dear to my heart, discipleship. But I think it's so imperative that we continue to bring this to the forefront um, and don't allow discipleship to just be something we, we read about or we hear about once in once in a blue moon. But let's bring it to the forefront. Let's, let's be persistent in showing that. 
Um, I'm blessed by Ezron. I'm blessed how committed you are to what you do with your YouTube channel and all that 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 is brought out, the content and the Bible studies. And I see how you're shifting to finances and different things. It blesses me. And it speaks to the discipleship of, you know, that connection that you have, that God, that kingdom connection that God allowed with Jave and Brother Gio. And I know you have others that has poured into your life. And you're saying, hey, I'm reaching out. And guess what? Through this reaching out, you're also discipling. So <laughs> it's not only one-on-one, -on -one, but you're, dis you're discipling and making disciples through what you're doing. So continue to do that. Oh my God, Michelle, behave yourself. Um, so much I want to say, but Tramita and Jave, God bless you. That was awesome. I was just ready for you to preach. <laughs> Continue on preaching. <laughs> I'm here like ready to take notes. <laughs> But um, to continue on what Pastor Michelle was saying about discipleship, um, I can feel the spirit when she's speaking about like how important it is to her and how important it is or it should be to all of us, you know. Um, and like I said earlier, um, I, I'm just so proud of the work that you're doing as well. And I think like like she was saying, I'm learning things just by being on here with you guys in this Zoom and doing this video together. You know, I'm learning different things and it's making me think a little more critical in different ways that I probably wouldn't think about on a regular basis, just, you know, because um, these questions bring up so many different, sort of just so many different ideas and topics and just, you know, you can go all different ways with it. But for me, for me particularly, why is discipleship important? So I think it's important just to know as well that people are going through some of the same things that you're going through. And you would never know that unless you get to have that conversation and build those bonds with others. Um, also, it's very important because you, we should be sewn into others what has been sewn into us. And we can't do that if we keep our mouths quiet, you know, um, and we can't share our experiences. We can't share our trials and tribulations. We can't share our testimonies of what God has actually gotten us through and how he's brought us through and how where we are today if we do not disciple and if we do not, you know, speak to others and share the goodness, no one's going to know. Um, so like Brother Jave, Jave excuse me, said earlier about the small groups. So uh, when we got our pastor, she brought that back. And I was like, I, I've been in the church since the day I was born. And I really couldn't remember small groups like this. Like, I remember it like when I was younger a little bit, but then it kind of went away for a while. So she brought it back. And, you know, we have our monthly meetings uh, due to COVID's monthly, you know, via Zoom um, before we were like weekly or, or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, we we're having meetings and such. And you do get to learn and develop those bonds with each other because um, you have a smaller group to really get to a little more in depth with. And something that I realized for our youth in general is that I realized we have so many adults and we have so many youth, but they don't really know each other like that. You know, we see each other on Sundays. Hi, pastor this. Hi, brother here. Hi, you know, sister here, whatever. But you don't really get to know more about that person. So I actually did start a mentorship program um, it just launched in May where, you know, each youth is connected to an adult in the church, a more seasoned um, Christian in the church that can help them and disciple to them through a mentorship program where they get to know each other on a deeper level. And in that um, instance, and in, by forming that bond, you then will get to know more about God and where you want to be. And then, you know, feeling convicted about what you might be doing out in the world, you know, not just as a mentee, but our mentors, because like I said, it's always a work in progress. Even though you may be on a longer Christian journey, you still may have things that you need to work on. And your mentee may be like, oh, brother so-and-so, remember you said this or, you know, or whatever it may be. We can all learn from each other, no matter what age it is. So that's why it's important to keep discipleship alive and to know that we all need to do our part. And the only way we can do our part is by sharing our testimonies and sharing our trials and our tribulations and keeping those bonds strong and keeping them um, consistent as well. Yeah, to totally agree. Um, for me, discipleship is important because if without discipleship, we will all remain infants in Christ. And as a result, the church will never grow. So that is why the I believe that the, that's the importance of the discipleship, so that the church continues to grow from generation to generation through season to season, continues to advance and elevate. Another thing that, that just came to me, I think is also important. We have to be careful in discipling, that we're not discipling the culture of the church. We're discipling based on the word of God. 
think sometimes we like to pass on culture. And sometimes a culture, a lot of times a culture has nothing to do with the Bible. And we raise up a generation of young people based on culture and not the word. So we have to be careful in that sense. Second thing that I, that I saw, and I was just reading Matthew 28 again. He said, go and teach all nations. But discipleship is not about teaching us how to do church, right? Or teaching us how to, you know, minister within the four walls. I believe discipleship goes beyond just the spiritual. Discipleship is teaching each other, teaching the young people. How do you represent Christ outside of the four walls? How do you represent Christ? How do you live for God in school? How do you live for God at work? And so it's much more than just how to do church, how to read, how to pray, how to live. And I think I'll end I'm on that note. That's why discipleship is important, that we continue to grow in Christ, that we can take off those training wheels, right? And help somebody else until they learn to pedal on their own, right? But not so much that we get ahead of ourselves. I think we know it all, that we continue the cycle. As I am disciple, I disciple. As that person is disciple, they disciple. It continues, it continues. We all grow from glory to glory, from level to level. Can we have a, a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. So much for all your thoughts, your opinion, your idea. And going back to what everything that you all said, as you are taught, you taught, you teach others. Like my willingness to help and serve came from both sides of my family. My grandmother who died this week, our rest in peace to her and her soul. She t she showed the ultimate version of helping and it will pass down to my mother. And then my mother passed it down to me. And growing up, I always was helping some type of way. Even if I didn't even know how to do it. I was like, you know what? Let me let let me let me help you out. I'm probably gonna do it wrong, but yeah, at least you get to help. So so once I got into YouTube, I'm like, I could still do I could still do my help, but now I could do it into a different version of it. I'm doing it through speech. Then when I transitioned into doing more of the Christian content and started preaching, now I could help them through that way. Now I have all these relationships with these leaders. Now I could bring them in to teach the others. And then with all the topics that I talk about, um, they all affect us like finances. We all will have to pay bills someday. Someday we all will have to pay bills. So you're going to have to know how to manage your money. You're going to have to know why is why you need to have a good credit score, why you need to not overspend your money and just all of the above because all of this applied to us and it's a keep on learning process. And thank you so much for my mentors for continuing to pour into me because as they pour into me, I'm pouring into um, others. And this right here is an example of discipleship. Because cause I was disciple, now I'm pouring in to everybody out there. So whoever see this video, you're, you're continuing to learn. And I want to have more youth like me, whether it's my age, below my age, older my age, to be able to work in their talent. Not do what I'm doing. Do with in, in the talent that God gives you. If it's music, um, preaching, um, whether it's creations, whatever gift God has given to you, I want you to be able to use it in your form. Now, if you want to be like me, I'll be very flattered, but make sure you, you go um, back to the town that God gives give to you. I think I think that there's some more to be said, some unwritten, right, uh, with discipleship. Um, don't, don't lose it today. Uh, okay. um, I, I think it's important, too, uh, and then we said we touched on it earlier, but the cycle is important because as we are discipled in, we cannot pour from an empty cup. Ezra, if you stop learning from me, go find another person to say, right? Because I can't keep pouring into you and, and trying to teach you and guide you if my cup isn't full, if no one's pouring into me. Right? At, at some point, you 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 outgrow all that I have discipled to or shown you or grow, right? So if, if you stop learning from me and you, go find another person to cycle. So this is why the cycle is important that we as leaders, right, those that are discipling are to never think that we are so knowledgeable. 
we've grown so much that no one else can show us and teach us and pour into us. We, we have to disciple um, a, a cup that is full, a cup that is continuing to be filled um, continually. I just think um, to piggyback off what you were saying about, you know, you're not able to pour into someone if someone's not pouring into you, that is very, very important and very true, as well as I also think that as flesh, we get upset about certain things. So there might be a time where the person that you are trying to disciple to or mentor, uh, mentor in general, you may not have anything else to give them and they may need to move on to someone else that can continue to pour into them. And so as their mentor, you can't feel upset if they do say, okay, you know, I'm going to move on and I'm going to, is it okay for you to pass the torch along to someone else that can kind of build, um, build me, build into me a little bit more, pour into me a little bit more as well too. Um, sometimes we allow our flesh to get the best of us and to make us feel certain ways, but we have to know that we're all in this together. And so there may be something that I'm not able to teach someone and they may need to learn that from somebody else and, you know, vice versa. Um, so that's very important. And also just the discipleship, the reason why it's important as well is because we all want to get to heaven and, you know, how can we help each other get to heaven if we do not share and we do not speak about the goodness of God and our trials and tribulations. So um, you just got to talk and you got to know how to, you got to know when to stop talking too. <laughs> as well and you also have to know when um you just you have to know when when i say stop talking i mean that sometimes as disciples um we may come a little hard at times and we need to learn when to, we need so we also need to learn how to be um compassion compassionate and when things may be a little sensitive when we need to pull back just a little bit because we don't want to lose people either by um doing too much and putting too much pressure either. So it's a it's a balance that we're all trying to learn, but at the end of the day, we just gotta do our best to make sure that what we're doing is coming from God and not coming from our flesh when it comes to being disciples as well too. Yeah, and I would just, I would just like to add that, you know, back to what the word disciple means as student. Um, this is a school that we don't graduate from until the Lord um, takes us home. Um, it's a school that we are continually a part of, however, um, we cannot be stunted in the world. So we can remain in pre-K. Uh, we should not be remaining in pre-K for 20 years. Um, there has to be some progression. But I love what Javi said about the empty cup piece because in the 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 disciple um, or mentor-mentee um, relationship, there has to be a consistent evaluation of what's happening. Um, so the person that is being the mentor has to be honest with his or herself to say, you know what, right now, this is what I'm going through. I need some time to get my healing, um, my deliverance, because that happened to me, um, just to be really transparent, went through a divorce, um, and I had to step back. I had to step back and not just leave my young people alone, but to get other people on board to be pour into them while I needed my healing and somebody to pour into me so I could come back. Um, but it's important to be honest with ourselves because I feel like at some, sometimes as leaders, uh, we think like, oh my God, I always have to, you know, always have to be on top of this, always have to be, on. but life happens. Life happens. Um, but the discipleship has to continue. It's, it's like a marathon, you know, um, uh, not a marathon. When you, the relay race, um, I can't be, just drop the baton because of what happened to me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to try. I'm like, okay, somebody got to come and um, take my place because this person or these persons are counting on me. So it's important. What I, when, when I think about discipleship, I think of selflessness instead of selfishness. And unfortunately, in Christendom, uh, we've seen a lot of selfishness. It's about what can I get? What can I get? But that's not what we are called to. We're called to give. The getting we get from God <laughs> in our prayer closet, in our prayer room, in our spending time with him in his word. That's where we get. Um, but we are called to pour. We're called to give. But we have to be honest about when we are dry, when we are dry and we have to step back. And I think that also shows the young people like, hey, all right, I'm not the only one that's going through. The youth leader is going through. The pastor's going through. 
oh my god like you know to just make it more real because i feel like so many times as um as ron said earlier and i believe to me we think that these leaders like oh my god they have it all together they got the magic um, potion of life like how to be perfect and everything but it's a lie we are all learning and growing and there's some seasons where we need to step back for a little bit regroup and come back again because guess what out of that dry season god is also going to teach us and we're going to come back better than we were before that's my testimony in the name of jesus thank you for your time <laughs> i love it i love it oh man i love it, it I, I think it's so important that we show them the real us right this is why i said disciples not, discipleship is not about perfection uh two things and I, i'm done i hope right and thank the holy spirit for bringing it back to my remembrance all right first one um Discipleship cannot take process, take, cannot take place without relationship. And we have to learn, I, I think I said this to Ezra, I said to somebody last week, we have to reach them before we teach them. Okay? We can't, you saved, all right, let's throw the Bible down their throat, right? Let's tell them how to lift their hands and tell them be holy. Build a relationship first. Right? And in building that relationship, you'll be able to reach them, right? Because they will be able to see you, you'll be able to see them, right? You have to build a relationship. The second thing is, and this, this is not mine, uh, but I saw it and I think it's so important. We cannot continue to give young people the destination without direction. You can't say, you have to be holy, have to live pure and not tell them how to do so. That is one of the biggest, for lack of a better word, problems I would say in the church. That we want them to do this and we want them to do that, but we don't show them how to do it. Right? So let us not give them the destination unless we also provide them with the direction. And then the giving them the direction, show them. I got lost on the way as well, right? I, I made some, I had to reroute, right? I made some wrong turns. I actually went back in the opposite directions for a little bit, but now I'm on track, right? So for those two things, relationship, please, and the other thing, give them the direction. Right? Um, you know, looking at Ezra, you know, growing up, I'm only 26, right? But, you know, started ministry at 17. Everyone would just tell me they went through stuff. All right. What did you go through? <laughs> there is so many things, right? Tell me what you went through so I know that you can really relate to me. I let, you know, some, it's okay. You may not want to reveal everything. You don't have to, right? But I think one of the biggest disservice we can do is just, you know, I, I'm going through it too at your age, you'll be all right. Go pray. No, sit me down. Tell me what you went through. Tell me why I'm struggling with these urges. And tell me how to overcome that. Tell me what to do. Tell me to go take a shower, a cold shower. <laughs> be, be real with me. What, what did you experience? Right? So this is all part of discipleship, walking with them and showing them how to become in the midst of struggling, in the midst of getting older and dealing with these different issues and problems in life, how do I become more like Christ? And I, you know, I had the opportunity to share stuff with, with Ezra and you know, another a couple, I remember Ezra was two years ago at the youth retreat, right? The shit, they had questions. Okay, this is what I went through. This is what happened. This is what I struggled with. Be real. Right? Not because I'm a I don't care about title, right? My, my title ain't gonna help you. Put that to the side. This is Jave. This is real. I, I struggle with the title without it. I still struggle with it. With it, I still have urges. I still have these problems. Right? We have to allow the young people to see the real us behind these positions and titles. Like Pastor Michelle, it's a topic that's very dear to me, right? Very passionate about. Because we have to set our young people up to, to be successful in, in this walk, right? And it's not done by 
you know, keeping things back and not telling them the real story, being transparent where we can, when we can, allowing them to see the real us. I'm done talking because I keep going. But God bless y'all. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm taking it. Is key. I'm, I'm taking it all the information. I'm saying here, taking it all the information, and also adding on to um, which which you said, Jave, it's also very dear to my heart. Because with me growing up and growing up in the church, all the flaws and stuff that I saw, that I'm like, eh, I make sure now I talk about it, like discipleship. Thank God. I have my disciple. I said disciples. I have my mentors with me, but I know other people don't have their mentor with me. And I, I, I have so much misconception about discipleship. So I'm like, you know what? Let, let me, let me help, let me help the people, and just continue to just pour, pour into them. And also, Red Jave, like he sat down with us at U Retreat and told us what, what he went through. I was over here like, yeah. Like, cause I've never seen somebody that like open. Like he didn't even show a quote with nothing he said. He told us straight up, and I think that was one of the first time I've ever seen that be done. And like he said, forget the title. This is Jave. This is what I went through. Same thing with me. From the time I've been on YouTube, I've always talked about stuff I went through. F- forget the the preaching. Forget the motivational speaking. Forget every single title. I have. This is Asmon. I'm a hot mess inside. This is why I'm a hot mess, and we're going to explain about how I'm going to fix this hot mess. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the video. For this is the end of the video. If you guys haven't already, please like, subscribe, turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, YouTube will send you a notification. I'll see you guys next week in part three of Learning About Discipleship.